Hey folks, welcome back to Truck and Trailer Tuesday on Tractor Time with Tim. Today we're going to be looking over some tie-down options that you can use for your equipment. First we're going to look at the Case Mini Excavator. This is the bigger one that we just got. And then we're going to load Johnny up on the truck and show you how we tie him down. Okay, before we get started, a couple of items of disclaimer here. The first thing is the rules we're going to talk about are national rules that we have found on F mcsa.gov and while those rules apply nationally there may be more strict rules in your state there's simply no way that we can understand the rules in every state in fact we find just understanding the national rules to be pretty difficult if you see something that i've said here that's incorrect or doesn't apply to your state that's fine leave a comment below one rule though if you leave a comment saying that doesn't work that's not legal cite your source there's so much hearsay and there's so many old wives tales in the trailer tie down world and in fact it seems everything to do with trailers and hauling equipment. I want to see the sources. We need to learn from each other. So go ahead and send me a web link right there in the comment. Say what's different, say where I'm incorrect. It's entirely possible that I've got a lot of this wrong. To the best of my knowledge here today, I'm gonna show you safe and legal ways to tie your equipment down to your trailer. Okay, on the website, fmcsa.gov, there's a lot of information about the trailer tie-down rules. Some of it's pretty complex. When I tried to boil it down, here's what I came up with. Equipment like this needs to be tied down on each corner, right? So there needs to be a, a separate tie-down on each corner. From what I read, it can't be the same tie-down loop through. It has to be a separate tie-down to each corner of the piece of equipment. Now, got to have some numbers, so hang on, hang on a little bit. First, you need to know the weight of your equipment. For Casey here, we'll say that's 8,000 pounds. The term they use on fmcsa.gov is aggregate working load limit. We're talking about the load limit for these tie-downs right here. So let's go through, through some definitions. Each chain or boomer or whatever else you have in this tie down configuration has a working load limit. According to the rules, it's a little bit fuzzy, but it appears that everything needs to have a stated working load limit. So let's look at what we got here. We have grade 70 chain. It's this gold colored chain and that's 5 16 diameter. Well, there's a chart online that shows what the working load limit of grade 70 5 16 chain is. In this case, I think it's roughly 4,000 pounds, a little bit more than 4,000 pounds working load limit. These boomers, we'll talk about those a little more in detail later, these boomers have a working load limit of about 7,000 pounds, a little over 7,000 pounds. So this configuration, you go by the minimum, so it would be the chain or the 4,000 pounds. You also potentially have some sort of a connector in the floor of your trailer that might have a working load limit on it as well. Everything applies. The lowest of anything in this chain. So the relevant working load limit in this configuration is the lowest working load limit of any element of the configuration. In this case, it's the chain. Okay, so now let's calculate the aggregate working load limit of our system. The way the rule states is that you calculate 50% of the working load limit of any given tie down. So we have four tie downs in our case that are identical working load limit of roughly 4,000 pounds on each tie down. 50% of that, roughly 2,000 pounds on each tie down. You add the four of those together. That's 8,000 pounds aggregate working load limit. Well, that 8,000 pounds has to be at least 50% of the actual load you're hauling. Okay, so we have an aggregate working load limit of our tie downs here of 8,000 pounds. Our equipment is 8,000 pounds. So we are double the requirements. We could haul up to 16,000 pounds with these same tie downs. On the website I mentioned, there are specific sections for each type of item that you might be hauling. Everywhere from concrete pipe to logs to heavy equipment. And that's what we're talking about here is heavy equipment almost. This piece of equipment is 8,000 pounds. When they refer to the heavy equipment, it's 10,000 pounds and up. So it gets a little bit fuzzy as to which section you need to refer to. I think it's a little bit of several sections, the automobiles, the basic cargo requirements, 
and some of the heavy equipment requirements kind of all work together. For heavy equipment, in addition to the four tie downs we mentioned, there also has to be tie downs on a boom like this. I couldn't find any description of how much working load limit you needed on those tie downs, but you do have to have them tied down. So this is how we hauled Casey home from Louisville's GIE show, was we used our cargo buckles, we'll talk about those later, to tie down the boom to make sure it can't move. Now we are really happy with these boomers. These are fancy boomers, uh, much nicer than a, than a fold over boomer that you might see, you know, where you have just the big fold over, you have to use a, a, a cheater pipe on it to make it fold over. Um, and even better than some of the threaded boomers, what's good about these is this ratcheting handle. And it has a switch here that basically a gear shift that you can go but whether you're going out or in. And then when it gets loose, you can use your hand here to go like this. I'm kind of doing it slowly because it's really loud, and, uh, but I do want you to see how it works. These boomers are available on our Amazon store, amazon.com slash shop slash tractor time with Tim. They're pretty expensive, but they really work well. Okay, so we got Johnny on the trailer. Let's talk a little bit about how we tie him down. We like to use these cargo buckles. They're much faster than the boomers that we just showed. That really answers probably the obvious question is why don't you use the chains and boomers because they're obviously strong enough. We load the tractor and unload the tractor frequently. So having uh, the easiest approach to attach is worth a lot to us. These cargo buckles, now let me take this off. This is a, an addition we'll talk about in just a second. So the advantage of these cargo buckles is when you open this up like this, they will auto retract. You can pull them out, they auto retract. Incredibly nice, okay? And then if you want them to lock, you can fold that down and you can't pull them out. To ratchet them tight, you can ratchet them. We'll show you that in a second. These things, fast, easy, efficient, the best of all worlds. Some folks have commented in prior videos that you can't use straps like this. You must use chains instead. We've looked all through the national laws and we just can't find anything that says that. Let's hook them up. As I said before, every item in the entire tie down configuration has a working load limit. This one says that it has a 5,000 pound maximum braking strength. The working load limit is one third of the max braking strength. So this D-ring has a working load limit of 1,667 pounds. Same with the chains. Each of these hooks, the pins, everything has a working load limit. I hook right up there to the backhoe frame because that is the frame of the tractor. Now, this cargo buckle it has a working load limit of 1167 pounds. So let's do that math again. 1167 pounds working load limit per tie down. We have four of those. That totals somewhere around 4600 pounds working load limit. We can use half of that. That's 2300 pounds. And we have to have a working load limit at least 50% of what we're actually carrying. So our aggregate working load limit is just over 2,300 pounds. We can tow Johnny as long as he is less than just over 4,600 pounds. So unless Johnny's eaten a lot of Wheaties recently, we should be fine. The 1025R specified weight is 1,440 some pounds. Now you can add items like I have some ballast. I have filled tires. I also have rear wheel weights. 
Um, so the total of that probably gets you somewhere around 1,800 pounds, maybe tools in the toolbox, fuel in the tank. Now let's talk about attachments. The loader, I believe, is somewhere around 600 pounds, and most rear attachments are somewhere around 600 pounds, maximum. Maybe a little bit heavier in some cases, but that's, that's about the max. For one thing, that's about the max that the three-point hitch will lift. 1,800 plus 600 is 24, plus another six is an even 3,000 pounds. You like how I did that? So we should be well within the range. We are capable of tying down 4,600 pounds. We're hauling about 3,000 pounds. So we should be all right. Christy, the bucket looks pretty bad. Yeah. It's been sitting outside. Yeah. So that's not good. Okay, let's talk about the front tie down. There's a couple things different. I've been tying right up here to the hood guard. I don't know if that's perfect or not, but that's what I've been doing. There are a few manufacturers that make specific hooks that you can hook to the front frame here. I should get me some of them. So let's talk a little bit about what I'm doing here. In the website I mentioned earlier, it discussed that you needed to have protective coverings over any sort of a rub type place like this. And so that's what we've got here, just some protection to keep this, well it's kind of seat belt material, from cutting or otherwise ripping up. The cargo buckles, these protectors are also on our Amazon store, amazon.com slash shop slash tractor time with Tim. We don't have a lot of items on there, so just the practical stuff, things that we show all the time and use all the time in our videos and in our business, it's worth your time. Take a look. It takes just a second to hook these up. Just run it right up there, hook it, and I'm ready to crank it down. Even I can do these. They are so handy. Now they're a little more expensive than a regular ratchet strap, but if you've ever tried to thread that through and get that, and then you crank it and it gets too tough. These are awesome. These are a perfect fit for an ATV. Be careful, use that working load limit to calculate whether it'll work on a slightly larger tractor than this. You get much heavier and these won't be appropriate. Actually, I wish they would make one just a little bit heavier. I'll go talk to them. These are made by a company right up the road called IMMI. I-M-M-I. Really nice product. Okay, we've got Johnny loaded now. So we're ready to go. We gotta get on to our next project. I just want to say there's possibility that I may have some errant information in this video. As I said earlier, if you disagree with something, provide your reference in your comment. We'll take a look. We're happy to put out a correction video later. We'll pin a comment at the top if there's something we've stated that's egregiously wrong. But I hope you can use this as some guidance as to how you need to tie down your tractor or your ATV or your mini excavator or whatever toy you've got. I hope you've enjoyed this everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Push that little bell button right beside the subscribe button, you'll get notifications. We've been hearing a lot of comments recently about folks not getting the notifications and seeing that that bell has been turned off somehow. So make sure it's checked and we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. So on today's video, folks, we're gonna be poking some holes in the ground. We've already started back here. Let's see if this post hole digger can redeem itself today. So far, it is my least favorite attachment.